and I'm an instructor out here. I'm in the 54th OSS at Holloman Air Force Base, and I fly with the 314th uh, Fighter Squadron. I'm here to answer some of your guys' questions about Holloman Air Force Base today. Um, first question that you guys had was, how do you become a fighter pilot? Um, the way that that process works is you need to get a college degree. Um, that's what you need to do to become an officer. You can do that either through ROTC um, at a civilian college, or you can go through a military academy to go through a four-year degree process and then either commission from that military academy or ROTC or go through the officer training school and then you'll be able to enter the flight training program. So once you're able to get commissioned, you go through your military training, uh, the initial training and your uh, flying is gonna be about a year long. You go through a prop plane and then a small jet, then you go through about three months of some follow-on training and then about six months here at Holloman if you're gonna fly the F-16, learning everything from takeoff and landing up through like employing weapons, shooting the gun that's inside the airplane. <laughs> We are what's called an FTU, so a formal training unit, which means that the students who show up here have had about 15 months of flight training, so they are rated pilots, but they've never flown the F-16 before. Um, so they first do some academics where they learn about the hydraulic system, fuel, the engine, kind of like the tech manual, if you will, for the airplane. Then they start learning about the different procedures to start the airplane, to take off and land in the simulators, and then we have them do those flights airborne. So it's kind of a stair-step approach where they go from simulators to actually flying, and our job is to teach them the basics. So ideally, when they leave here, they have seen everything the jet can do at least once. Um, so the airplane, just like you see behind us there, without a lot of weapons hanging on the outside of it, um, can go up to Mach 2.05, so just over twice the speed of sound. Normally, how fast we go is about 600 miles an hour for our normal training. When you're flying, um, it's an incredible experience. Um, from everything, just from the, the feeling of speed you get when you're flying low to the ground and you can see things, uh, moving by you really quickly. Uh, when we're fighting other airplanes, like you guys have probably seen in movies, um, airplanes move by you really quickly, about a thousand miles an hour is the speed that we're passing each other with. Um, you feel that G-force like at the bottom of a roller coaster. Um, and thing about the F-16, it's incredibly smooth. So it's pretty much the fastest, smoothest roller coaster um, that you've ever experienced. And then we get to drop weapons, so we get to feel the weapons fall off the airplane. Um, when you shoot the gun in the airplane, it kind of feels like the rumble strips on the edge of a highway. Um, and we're talking to guys on the ground who were also getting training and they're excited when the weapons are impacting when we're shooting the gun, so it's, it's an incredible experience. So in the 20 millimeter gun system, it's a six barrel Gatling gun, so there's six barrels that spin around really quickly, and it can shoot 100 rounds per second. Um, what we normally train to here is it's what's called inert ammunition. So it looks like just basically a big rifle round, and it's just a piece of steel that comes out of the barrel. Later on, when they go to different training, they have high explosive ammunition. So there's a small charge in that ammunition that does more damage when it hits a target. Uh, we do work at night sometimes, so probably about two weeks out of every six weeks or so, uh, we do some night flying. So here, that's important because we're training our students, so they need to learn how to do everything from just the basics of takeoff and landing at night, all the way up until flying in formation next to other airplanes, and then eventually shooting the gun and dropping bombs at night. Um, so we fly at nights at least as much here as at other units, and possibly even a little bit more to get the student training done. So it depends, right? We have a checklist that we actually now have in digital form. We have iPads that we fly with. Um, so as soon as we realize that, um, we're gonna start talking to other airplanes that are flying with us. They're basically gonna uh, rejoin in a close formation and let us know what it looks like on the bottom of our airplane. We also have a pilot that sits up in the tower um, that has that same checklist is gonna back us up, right? Making sure we go through the correct steps. We're gonna make an assessment, both what we're seeing in the airplane and outside the airplane. Um, if we can resolve the issue ourselves, then we'll just land normally or we may just kind of decide to stop on the runway and let people come and just inspect the gear once. Um, that could go all the way up until possibly calling like the people who make the airplane. Um, there's a procedure for that. If it's a really unique situation, just to make sure we have as much knowledge as possible. If you're interested in joining the military, uh, my experience is with the officer route. Um, obviously, doing the best you can in high school is important, right? So find the things that you're interested in in high school, that you're passionate about, do well in those classes, then start exploring your college options. Um, like I said, there's the academies, there's ROTC, there's OTS later. Um, and if you, if you think you're interested in flying, then go out there, get that information early. I'm going to talk with people who've done it before so they can give you a good plan to kind of walk down that road and I think it's incredible. So I definitely encourage anybody who thinks they're interested to go out there and try to do it. Hey guys, I'm Staff Sergeant Kyler Kiger. I work over here at the 311th AMU. I'm part of the 849th AMXS here at Holloman. So we do small maintenance every day. It's known as scheduled maintenance. So it'll be cleaning the canopy or just cleaning up the jet as a whole. And so that's like an everyday thing or every 15 days or so. Uh, bigger maintenance, we just fix it as it comes up. So we come into work two hours before the flying window and we'll go through our roll call and everyone who gets put on a jet will come out about an hour before 
I'll break everything down, get all the covers off, uh, make sure everything's serviced properly, and all in all, it probably takes about 30 minutes to get the aircraft ready to fly. My favorite aircraft, that's a tough one. Uh, honestly, the F-16, it's a very versatile plane. Uh, it'll win almost any fight in the air, and we can do just about anything from air support to the ground or air-to-air -air combat. So here at Holloman, we fly with the F-100 Pratt & Whitney engine, and we also fly the Pratt & Whitney F-101. At active bases that fly more real-world missions, they use the GE engines, which are a little bit more powerful, so they can fly a little bit faster and a little bit harder. So one of you asked how we replaced an F-16 engine, and we were lucky enough to have one actually pulled out at the moment. So as you can see, when we pull an F-16 engine out, we actually use this trailer right here, and we slowly roll it backwards right out of the back of the jet. And then from there, we can do all the inspections we need to do on the engine itself, and we can look at the bay it sits in. So you guys asked how to become a maintainer in the Air Force. So your first step would be obviously going to see a recruiter. After that, as long as you can make it, if you can pass the test to get into the Air Force, you can be a maintainer. Most of the time, you just have to ask. Generally, the aircraft gets chosen for you, and you go through your tech school, which, depending on your airframe, can be anywhere from four months to a year. And after that, you go to your base, and you are a maintainer. Uh, I've enjoyed it. So it wasn't my first job in the Air Force. I went to a different tech school first and got retrained into this. I've enjoyed it a lot. You work with your hands. Uh, you get a lot of face time with pilots and other officers. And it's just a good learning experience. You work with a lot of great people.